Hey guys, Sen here. I've just broken the record for capital P2 shots in a single raid weekend with the new 2000 plus upgrade bracket. The old record was four two shots, which was held by three clans at the very top, the number two clan from China, the number four clan, the Splasher, as well as the number six clan, the Lafoons. But this week I was able to land five two shots over at the number 10 clan rebirth and break the record. Ever since Supercell implemented a change to matchmaking last month where clans with over 2,000 upgrades are facing each other, peak two shots up here have become very rare because almost every peak you face is completely maxed. So today, I'm going to be breaking down all of my two shots that I got this week and maybe they can help you as well in your own raid weekends. So I will just say this right off the bat, there is no set formula for capital P2 shots, especially at max level, because these things are almost all so difficult that you have to be creative and you're going to have to execute your creative plans almost flawlessly to even stand a chance. Almost every single army that I bring in this video is going to be different from the last. Starting off against this weird looking capital peak with a square design in the middle as well as a floral pattern with its walls, tons of buildings on the outside, and weird bases like this are perfect for you because they usually have a ton of exploitable weaknesses that you just have to figure out. So starting off, we're going to use some rams to go up the right side of the base because we want to open up the wall towards the cannon car as well as the spear thrower, as well as the rams are going to pull any log traps. There can't be any bombs here because there's no spaces between the spear thrower as well as the cannon car. So they take that defense out, take out the enemy raid cart. The enemy troops are so annoying on this base. So we grab that thing for a Larry barrel as well as the Larry's go forward and clear a bunch of trash buildings up the right side of the base. But we are going in with a golem to go straight up the gut. Because it's just a bunch of big splash defenses and not a bunch of point defenses, the golem is going to do so well against the core. I go with the rage spell to get the damage boost, a hog rider to tank for any zap traps, and it pulls two zap traps as well as tanks the capital peak beam for one shot. So that one hog just saved like 7,000 or so HP of that mountain golem as he works his way in. The rage spell is super necessary to get through all of the HP on the capital peak itself, as well as allow my inferno dragon because there's no air defenses around to burn through the enemy super dragon while the golem is tanking super quickly and so the golem will have enough hp to work through all of that now i have calculated that the capital peak blast bow as well as the rock artillery does around 800 damage per second and my golem is going to have easily enough damage with the help of the rage spell to get through all of that capital peak and because I was able to take so many traps with that hog rider at the beginning, we are also going to be able to take out this blast bow with the golem. He turns the right way, he goes right after the capital and takes out the blast bow in two shots. And I have a pinata with graveyard spells on the bottom section over here to overwhelm those two giants, as well as I can now use some barbs to tank one zap trap and then go in inside the range of all of these dead zones and take out the rock artillery for basically free. And now my Larry's are working their way around. I want them to avoid this crusher as much as possible and also grab a bunch of point defenses after the giants go down. But unfortunately, we only have two graveyard spells and a lot of defenses as well as the larrys are getting distracted and once they finally head over to the crusher they will meet their doom but i've also brought in a pack of minions up the right side i was planning to take out both of the cannons over there outside of range of the air defenses but the larrys did such a great job there were no traps over there that they were able to take one of them and we'll just use those minions to finish off the other cannon over there but now we are set up for our second hit. The peak is down. The enemy dragon is down. Those are the two main threats on the base. And let's see how we finish this. Because we have two graveyards down, you might be thinking we're just going to do an ordinary hog rider ram spam attack. But unfortunately, because the rams go after the walls, they're not going to go in towards the defenses, tank the defenses, and they're not going to be as efficient for setting up the graveyards as a normal attack would be. So instead, we will go in with cannon carts as our main DPS so that they can work their way around slowly and then we will use the hog riders to stun the defenses and they will be the ones to set up our graveyard spells we can bring three more graveyards on this second attack as our troops move forward this is a strategy that i know the chinese players on the chinese server like a lot they love their cannon carts and i have been trying them out a little bit i think they're pretty good i don't think they're as great as just the normal hog spam strategy but in this case because the buildings are super open there's no walls to open this strategy will work a lot better than just an ordinary ram spam attack 
So as my troops are moving through, the giant tanks the blast bow, hog rider to stun the defenses that might start locking onto my cannon carts, and as my troops start dying, Larry's reinforced from the back as well as a graveyard spell to tank these two point defenses over here. We have four more hog riders left as well as two more graveyard spells. You have to be careful. You don't want to drop down your graveyards too late because otherwise you'll have no troops left to die. We drop down two graveyard spells to try to now overwhelm this backside Inferno Tower. Once we start getting some Larry spawning, we'll use a Hog Rider to stun the Inferno Towers. Inferno Towers are one of the nastiest defenses to try to overwhelm with graveyards because they kill your skeletons so quickly that you really have to be able to overwhelm them quickly to do any amount of damage. But with that Hog Rider stun, we're able to stun the Inferno Tower, overwhelm it, and there's a couple more defenses on the backside. I'm lucky that the Giant Cannon was able to shoot down one of the Cannon Cards, but we have two left and one more Hog Rider to stun this last Inferno Tower with a huge swarm of Larrys coming from all directions. This is a really nice way to finish off this base and grab our first Capital Peak 2 shot. Up next, we are facing the Space Pirates, and if you take a look at this Capital Peak, look at how many defenses are within Wizard Chain distance of it. When you see this, you should almost always be going in with a Wizard Bomb, either on your first or your second hit. In this case, we're just going to set up the Wizard Bomb for the second hit to finish off the base, but we're going to start off with the Jump Spell over here, over this moat over here. So a Ram will not actually target this wall because there's no buildings behind the wall. Instead, it'll go after this Giant Post, which is not what we want. And so instead, we just bring the Jump Spell, which is now one capacity, which also allows us to bring a Rage Spell as well as a Frost Spell for later. But the thing I want to highlight the most on this attack is Spell Efficiency. So because Spells in the Clan Capital last for two attacks, any spell that you bring on your first hit will also help you on the second hit as long as you drop them correctly. So in the last attack, we dropped some graveyard spells on the first attack. Graveyard spells are still so good because no matter where you place them, they'll generate larries for you and they'll get value no matter what. But other spells like the rage spell and the frost spell, you have to be careful and have to place them really well to make sure that they get the most value for you over the course of two attacks. When you see a blast bow as well as the dragon ruin over here, that means the defender has not yet put those defenses inside their base, which means you can easily deal with all of that with one giant towards the right, one Inferno Dragon towards the left. The Inferno Dragon gets pulled inside the range of the Blast of Dead Zone and then melts through all the HP of the enemy dragon and takes out the Blast for 25 camp space. That is so efficient, so good, and that's going to help us out immensely because the enemy dragon is the most annoying defense on the Capital Peak. But now we are finally set up and ready to go with the rage spell down we drop down some ramps to help tank open up some walls up ahead and then use a sparky sparky is so good against compact bases and you will see why with the help of the rage spell with the help of some distraction she locks onto the rapid rocket and goodbye to the giant cannon goodbye to the rocket artillery in a single blast hogs up the left side of the map with the helps of the ramps to help distract and they will take out the defenses on the flank to help the sparky to move her into the base faster and even grab one shot against the capital peak itself now the sparky does not do a great job splashing up the capital peak it actually cannot splash any defenses at all because the capital peak is such a big building but we have set up our wizard bomb so nicely for the second hit and look at that rage spell it helped out the sparky on this first hit and it's going to help out our wizards on the second hit because that is just in range to allow wizards to chain in that rage spell on top of that capital peak but now we're going to bring in some more graveyard spells because graveyard spells are still so good at distracting and let's see how we set up this attack in the beginning first we start off with three rams from far away to open up this wall and try to distract this rock artillery over here those rams will also start generating larry's for me to uh, get those graveyard spells going then we drop down a giant up the left to distract this blast bow a giant up the right to tank for this capital peak and now we are ready to go with some rams to help distract for the wizards on their approach now all of the big defenses are tanked for and our wizards are going to be safe some rams are going to get some graveyard spells going and the wizards are going to chain down the entire world around the capital peak a couple of hog gliders to stun the capital peak that will make sure that the capital will never shoot at our wizards and the wizards are still standing in the race spell as they finish off the giants but we'll use a pekka to finish off the backside bomb towers a couple of hog riders to take out this wizard tower and protect our larrys so the larrys can go forward and take out all of the backside point defenses over here 
a jump spell on the backside leading into the giant cannon leading into those backside defenses some barbs to try to pick off that giant cannon because i noticed it's locking onto my wizards instead of the pekka and so we finish off the giant cannon before it gets a shot off and finishes off all my wizards and we're going to be able to take out that last crusher one more hog on top of the spear thrower and we have taken out all of the defenses on this base now here's the thing even though we've taken out all the defenses, we are not yet home free. Because this base was so compact, that means there's no space for traps inside of it. And the Capital Peak has so many traps, which means we need to make sure that we don't run into too many traps. A Zap Trap, a Zap Trap, a Lock Trap, a Bomb. There are so many troops dying. The P.E.K.K.A. has gone down. We still have a Barb in the deployment bar that we are holding on to just in case we run out of troops at this point. But there is so much on the Capital Peak in terms of traps that can still screw you over even when all the defenses are down so definitely be careful and don't get overly cocky we're going to drop down the bar to finish off this little clan house in case there's any traps over there and those hogs up the left are going to finish off that clan house on the top and that is our second peak two shot with an 8.5k finish up next we have one of these labyrinth style bases now these bases are here to farm noobs you drop troops down here they go all the way around the labyrinth and get shot down by all the big defenses if you drop ramps to try to open up these walls over here they instead go after the bomb tower as well as the rapid rocket walls over here and so if you're not careful you get absolutely screwed but unfortunately for this clan mostly divorced over here this base is from the rebirth and so the guys here told me exactly how to hit it the way you do it against this base is you use a jump spell leading towards the capital peak and then you just send in the raged archers the raged archers look so goofy as they jump over so many walls and shoot down the capital peak with the help of the rage spell now look at that bra spell on the back side over there it covers two rock artilleries two blasters as well as the giant cannon and because we covered all the splash defenses back there that means we can drop down our archers in two packs at once and finish off the capital peak even faster than usual it normally takes 10 to 11 packs of archers but this time it only takes eight packs of archers for me because the defenses are shooting so slowly that even once the archers lose stealth they get a couple more shots and do a lot more damage now we need to also finish up the dragon as well as the inferno tower if we want to drop in our sparky towards the right side of the map so we're finishing off the dragon post over there and so we can now pull the dragon wherever we want we want to use the sparky and just use the last bit of that rage spell to try to get a bunch of pop shots on the right side of the base because all the defenses are frosted there's not going to be too much damage on the sparky we drop down the giant to pull the dragon and tank the defenses the sparky goes down and blasts the rock artillery with two more packs of archers to finally finish off that dragon now here's the thing, I was actually hoping for my Sparky to go towards the right and just clean house with all of these big defenses, but she turns left, she strays on me, and she gets taken out very quickly as she starts walking towards all these spear throwers and all of these cannons, and we are only going to get to 14% on this first attack, but the guys actually told me that what I got was way more than enough than needed for a two shot, and so I was feeling very confident. Now we will drop down our ray spell leading towards all these big defenses, a ram to pull the zap traps and any traps that are still there. We drop a giant to tank and then a sparking on top of the mortar and she's going to splash all of these defenses on the backside. Once the blast bow gets distracted, we can also send in a pack of minions to try to clear this giant cannon as well as this bomb tower. I was actually expecting the Sparky to skip the giant cannon completely, but she actually turns there a little bit and gets a little bit sidetracked, but now she's back. We use some barbs to finish off the frosted cannon cart as well as the help of the race bow to get them through. Unfortunately, the barrel actually pops and kills the blast bow, and so we weren't able to get a sparky chain, but now the sparky is going in. We use the barrel to flank the inferno tower as well as distract it, and then we use two graveyards on the backside to distract all of those point defenses. Now, I go with the graveyard instead of a rage spell, because the Sparky can already one-shot basically every defense on the backside, we don't really need the Rage Spell, and so we can bring those Graveyard Spells to help distract those cannons and spear throwers, and also generate a bunch of Larrys to finish off those Giants and help with the cleanup on the backside. So here's the thing. This base was super compact, which means we didn't really face any traps on the entry. So just like the last base, there's going to be a ton of traps on the backside. So if we're not careful, we might still be screwed here. We send in some more hogs to try to pull some traps in front of the Sparky. We pull another bomb. And here's the thing, because we know who uh, built this base and we actually have this base, we know that almost all of the traps are on top of this backside clan house to troll someone to get a 99% fail. 
but I am prepared with one more hog to try to take that thing out. Two bombs have popped, another log trap, another two bombs, so those hogs kill the clan house and take out five big traps as they go through. And we have a huge swarm of Larrys converging from all different angles, which means we're not gonna get screwed by any log traps or any other traps on the rest of this base. And that is another two shot this time against a base that we already knew how to take out. Now here we go up against a CH9. These are super rare to run up against at 2000 plus matchmaking, but they still do exist. And when you do find them, they don't have this blast bow, they don't have this dragon post, and they're a lot more manageable to deal with. We're gonna start off with the frost in the middle over here. There's four big defenses all in range of a single frost. That is a money frost. And we're gonna go up the left side instead of the right side. This space looks symmetrical, but there's a couple of key differences. This right side drag, uh, giant post is actually closer to all these air defenses, and so we can't snipe that with minions, unlike this left side raid card post, and we can just easily snipe that with minions and clear a bunch of trash buildings. Also, this left side bomb tower is not being covered by this multi-cannon, whereas this right side bomb tower is being covered by the spear thrower, and so this one's easier to take out with just a single pack of hogs, and we're coming in with graveyard hogs. Now, this strategy is not completely out of the meta. I don't use it too often against max bases, but when there's not a dragon, this strategy can work like a charm. Graveyard spells angle them down low on the multi-mortar dead zones just outside of range of the wizard towers. And now there's actually a rocket artillery over here that's just super exposed for some reason. So we're going to pick that off with a ram to help distract and then sneak in two hogs to just quickly take that thing out so it doesn't shoot at us. But the graveyard skeletons are actually going to distract all of those defenses that are frosted. And so the hog riders can sneak in and try to take them all out. The rams are going to distract for the hog riders as well as generate all your skeletons as well as clear the trash buildings in behind so you can deploy your troops closer. Now one more hog rider on top of this bomb tower but unfortunately it somehow gets in range of the multi-cannon and one of the hog riders goes down super quickly but because it's a lower level bomb tower and lower level defenses we're still able to get it down on this attack and we have taken out a huge chunk of this base. I think we're going to reach 15% and counting. The Teslas have already popped around this rocket artillery over here and we are set up for a nice finish on this base. Once again, because the graveyard spells last for two attacks, even if they're not covering any defenses anymore, they, they do a great job spawning Larry's and spawning distraction for your second hit. So graveyard spells are almost always a top tier choice to bring on your first attack because it just generates you so much value over the course of two hits. And on this base, because we can actually snipe both of these Teslas with a Sparky off the uh, rock artillery, we're just gonna do that right now and just take one shot from the rock artillery. It's frosted up so it shoots a lot slower and we're gonna sneak in with some tanking up the left side, take out the multi-cannon which was low and have the Sparky work her way left towards this left side multi-cannon. We'll fast forward from here because we're just going to give Sparky as much time as she needs. The graveyard spell is spawning a couple of skeletons to distract some of the defenses, but we're holding on to our last two graveyard spells because we want to make sure those graveyard skeletons spawn at a relevant time when they can distract the Inferno Towers while all my troops are moving forward. So we'll times two through here as we give Sparky a lot more time to work through. And then once she starts working her way in, we're gonna start trying to collapse the right side with the P.E.K.K.A. The P.E.K.K.A. is gonna 1v1 the Giants that walk outside of range of all the defenses. The P.E.K.K.A. does a really good job at killing some of those enemy troops like the Raycar as well as the Giants, as long as there's not other defenses in the way. And once the Sparky is finally approaching the backside, we have a Frost Bell on top of the District Hall, which is super nice to slow down all of its peak beams as well as the Inferno Towers to make sure it doesn't ramp up too fast. And then we sneak in some hog riders as well as some ramps to generate some more skeletons. The hog riders are going to stun those inferno towers and we're going to take them out super easily without them firing back at us too much. And we have a couple more troops for the backside. Against a corner capital peak like this, you almost always want to bring an inferno dragon. The inferno dragon is so good at DPSing down the capital peak as long as there's no air defenses and the capital peak isn't shooting at it and we will have a ton of bonus gold left over after we take out this capital peak in two attacks. And finally, the fifth two shot that got me the record was up against this very common internet base that we call the double L. So the double L is basically this wall section over here, these two thick wall sections that form L shapes. And this base is super toxic, it's super common, it's a labyrinth style base that's meant to trap noobs, but there are a lot of ways to actually two shot it. 
that are available from our Discord server. I'm actually using a plan from Luca from the Splasher, and he goes up the left side with the Sparky. Almost all the plans involve Sparky. I have one that goes up the right side, but the Giant Cannon and Dragon are switched, and so my plan doesn't work, but Luca's will. We go up the left side with a Frost Spell and all these big defenses. Rage Spell, like so, to clip the Giant Cannon with our Sparky, and then send in some ramps to distract the Inferno Tower and try to keep the Sparky alive. Now, the Sparky cannot one-shot the Inferno Tower with the Rage Spell, but if you get a bit of damage with your ram and those Barbarians inside, you can actually one-shot it like so. Otherwise, you use the Hog Rider to try to stun and finish off the Inferno Tower, and then the Sparky surges forward and finishes off the Rock Artillery. Once the Inferno Tower goes down, the map expands and you can use a P.E.K.K.A as well as some Wizards to go in to chain down all the defenses around the Capital Peak and use the P.E.K.K.A to DPS the Capital Peak as well as the Blast Boat in behind. I get a little bit lucky on the backside over here and my Sparky actually survives at 1 HP against the Blast Boat and blasts the Spirit Thrower Air Defense as well as the other Blast Boat combination and absorbs another shot from the Capital Peak and so my Wizards and the P.E.K.K.A is able to finish that all off and we'll have a couple more troops to grab a couple more uh, buildings over there. Grab the Spirit Thrower and do some damage to the other Spirit Thrower, but we are perfectly set up for our second hit. We just have to be a little bit more mindful about this dragon over here, but we will manage. We drop down a giant to tank. The Sparky finishes off the Spirit Thrower. This Tesla is damaged, so we can actually one-shot that with the help of our Sparky, and then another Tesla actually pops. We can't one-shot that one, but with the help of a Barbarian to do some damage, we're able to chip it down just enough to where the Sparky is able to one-shot that. And now the Sparky is moving forward towards the right side of the map just before it gets in range of this blast over here. We're going to use some ramps to help tank and try to make sure our Sparky is as healthy as possible moving into the back end of the base. Unfortunately, I'm a little late on the second ram, and so the Sparky gets locked onto by the blast bow. But we have to make sure that we take out this dragon. We use some ramps, we use the giant to help distract, and then with the help of the rage spell, that dragon is going to melt through the enemy dragon so quickly. Dragon on dragon action, and now... The Sparky is going to clear out the entire section with all those big defenses. There's one more Rock Artillery on the backside. We have a giant to tank for the Sparky. And once the Sparky locks onto that defense, we're going to drop down the Rage Spell, clip the Sparky, and make sure she can one-shot everything behind that. And there is basically nothing left on the base. We have a P.E.K.K.A. in case we need it for the Raid card, but you're going to see what I'm able to do on this. Uh, in this case. Once the Sparky approaches this Bomb Tower over here, we can just drop down a Barbarian, and that's actually going to lure the Raid Cart into range of the Sparky Blast, and then the Raid Cart is just going to get splashed down just like that, and we're going to use the P.E.K.K.A. to finish off its final form. With two Spirit Throws on the backside, we have a decently healthy Sparky, and that is more than enough to finish off the rest of the base. We had a pack of Archers to try to snipe down the enemy Dragon in case the Inferno Dragon failed, but that was not needed, and we get a nice two-shot with a lot of bonus gold for our fifth one of the video. And finally, I've decided to include one of my fails, so this one was an absolute heartbreaker. Prepare yourselves. We're going to drop down a couple of barbs, a couple of ramps to go up the right side of the map, clear these trash buildings, open up the wall, as well as open up the map for deployment. We want to open up the map for deployment so we can drop down another ramp to pull a zap trap on the left side of these two point defenses. I know there's a zap trap there because this is just a default layout or a default ruin, and I know where all the traps are over here. But after we open up the wall, we drop down a giant as well as the Sparky. The Sparky is able to two-shot the giant cannon with a couple of punches from the giant, and then she's going to be able to move her way up towards the rest of the base. We drop down the ram when we have a little bit of down, uh, time down south because we want to... Uh, use some bars to clear the trash buildings down here and help out the Larrys for later because we're actually going to do a Sparky Pinata down there. Because the Graveyard Spell has gone nerfed a lot, the Sparky is now enough with just 100 troop space to summon all of the Larrys from it. So we're going to wait for when the Sparky is just about to die before dropping down that Graveyard. But notice how I dropped down this Rage Spell at the start of the attack. I was able to plan very far ahead, know exactly where the Sparky's going to go. She's now going to go over towards this Multi-Mortar over here, finish that off, and turn towards the Capital Peak. That Rage Spell is going to help her as she moves into the Rock Artillery, as well as moves into the Capital Peak. And we're going to use that Rage Spell for the second hit to set up a Wizard Bomb as well. So as you can see, I planned out this hit very well to make sure every piece goes as perfectly as possible but unfortunately a tesla pops right next to the inferno tower i was hoping for the sparky to kill the 
uh, rock artillery and then go up towards the giant cannon but the sparky is going to get pulled into that tesla over there and she's going to get absolutely destroyed by the inferno tower the rage sparky cannot one shot a max inferno tower and she is going to go down before ever taking that thing out but we have our graveyard spells down we drop the left graveyard spell to try to make it just outside of range of that bomb tower and the right graveyard spell is on top of this multi-mortar we open up the wall so the larrys can also take out the giants afterwards and then get a lot of other trash buildings down there to open up the map for our last pack of manning the minions to go in after this bomb tower and try to skirt around all of these air defenses the bomb towers and the multi-mortars are super annoying for graveyard spells so taking them out on the first attack is going to make these two graveyards down here a lot more effective on the second hit where we're going to come in with the wizard bomb so many defenses around the capital peak that is a great value for wizards but we do have to set the wizards up properly if we don't want them to die and so now it is time to try to execute the wizard bomb we're going to drop down the frostbow on the back side of the capital peak slow the capital down as well as make sure all the defenses around it are more manageable for my wizards then we'll drop down some graveyards in behind to distract all the defenses away from the range of the wizard tower like so we drop a giant from far away to tank the point defenses and so our pekka is, can have a little bit more hp as she goes in and tanks all the rest of the defenses over there we'll drop down a ram to go in and send the pekka into the blast bow and then some more rams up the right side to go in to tank the inverter tower and get those graveyards going some hogs to go in to provide some additional distraction and then our wizards are finally going to go in behind once all the defenses are properly distracted and those wizards are going to chain down the remaining defenses around the capital peak as the rams start dying as the barbs start dying from inside we're going to get those graveyard larrys to swarm those backside point defenses the pekka is in the uh, dead zone of that blast bow she's quickly taking it out and i get a little bit lucky that she hooks around the wall and she's even going to grab that wizard tower afterwards but we have so many larrys and once the wizard tower goes down there is practically no splash left in the core of the base and there's just this little back section alive and we have a ton of troops we have the larry army moving now it, the graveyard spell has gone nerfed a lot of times but it still summons so many larrys five graveyard spells is absolutely disgusting and once we open up the wall the dragon gets closer to those barbarians we'll pull it out even further with the help of a giant as well as an inferno dragon to try to snipe the hp of that super dragon but a bomb pops another bomb pops all my larrys have lost their shields i've lost a couple of super wizards from that bomb but we're taking out the enemy super dragon and we have a couple more troops left the inferno dragon takes a horrible path and walks straight into range of that inferno tower and the rest of my larrys go down to that final bomb and at this point i realized that it was all over i was feeling so confident when i saw so many larrys beating on this wall but they all grouped up and all got blasted by some backside traps so this was so tragic i got so close if i had two barrels instead of a hog rider as well as three barbarians i would have had this space but i did not plan for the back section well enough and just like that my raid is gonna end at 99 percent all right, that'll be all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's longer video and you learned a thing or two about two shot and capital peaks. These are very difficult to land, but I personally find the challenge to be a lot of fun. Some of the best strategies right now for doing so are Sparky Rage, Graveyard Spam, and Colum also does surprisingly well against the capital peak as well. But make sure you join our Discord server if you haven't already. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's video and take care.